Hey friends, I'm so glad you're at the Nicole Crank Show today because I have something really important to talk to you about. Well, the first time this happened to me, I, I was probably 10 years old and my mom was in the kitchen. She was on a phone, the one when it still had the cord so she had to stay in the kitchen, it was like a leash. And I was in bed already and all of a sudden I heard this sound. It was like this, <gasps> and I didn't know what happened. And then in a little while she started crying. She wasn't ready to talk about it, but later I found out that that's the moment that she found out her grandpa, my great-grandfather, had passed. And it, that's the moment that I first remember losing somebody in my life and the grief, the sorrow that my, my mom felt when she found out that he was gone. And here's the crazy thing. When somebody passes on, we don't lose them. If they're connected to Christ, we know where they go. They go to heaven and we're eventually gonna be with them. So they're not lost. So why do we feel so bad? And you know, grieving comes not only when we lose a person, but we can lose a job. We can lose a friend, like maybe we're just out of relationship. We can lose an opportunity. There's so many things that we can grieve in life. And that's why I invited Roma Downey. She's my beautiful Irish friend with this beautiful spirit. She works with light workers. She was on Touch by an Angel. So her father has passed, her brother has passed. She lost her dog. Oh, her precious puppy. She lost her puppy. Almost lost her home in the Malibu fires. She's gonna to talk to us and she brings such peace and encouragement and she's gonna share one of her new devotionals that she's doing. And also, we're gonna to go to my father-in-law's grave site and it's my first time there after 15 years. I go with my husband who lost his pastor, his dad, and his best friend in the very same day. And we talk about how in the world can you have peace in one of the most world-rocking moments of your life. And here's the crazy thing, Philippians 4, 7 says, he can give us a peace that passes all understanding. That's my prayer for you during this program today, that I want you to DVR so you can share it with a friend who's going through grieving of a relationship or someone who's passed on. I want you to write down your thoughts. I want you to have pen and paper. I want you to write down your questions. I want you to write down the scriptures that, that God brings to your mind. And then I want you to go to NicoleCrank.com in a little while, and I want you to share it all with me. I want to walk through this with you. You're not alone. God is with you, and so are we. We're going to be praying for you. Tell them who your husband is for a second. Yeah, my husband is a um, is a producer, probably one of the biggest producers in this town. His name is Mark Burnett, and he produces shows that you may watch or have heard of, at least Survivor, The Voice, Shark Tank, Are You Smarter Than a Fifth Grader, uh, to name but a few. And he and I joined forces together uh, under our production company, Lightworkers. And our very first production was a 10-hour mini-series um, bringing the Bible to life for the History Channel. And at the time, you know, other friends of ours said, Asher, nobody will watch the Bible on TV. You're, you're foolish uh, um, thinking that you can take on something of that scale and nobody's that interested. Well, over a hundred million people watch the Bible on TV. And like my husband has a personality not dissimilar to yours. <laughs> He's kind of bold. He's you know, loud. He was a red, in a good way. Red a, beret. What is that? He was yeah, he was in a, a special unit in yeah. the British military and and when we joined oh, <laughs> yeah, he's a tough guy, but a big, you know, loving, loving guy as well. But in our partnership, you know, because we we work together, we're not just married, but like you and your husband, we work together. Which takes a special kind of love <laughs> to make that work, right? It does, and it's not always, uh, <laughs> you know. When you met Mark, he wasn't a big Hollywood producer. No, we met, and and I was having a manicure, pedicure. <laughs> And my husband was having a haircut. And you know sometimes when you go to the salon, like, I don't know about you guys, but you know, I was just in my sweats yeah. with an elastic waist, you know, and you don't really want to be wanting to meet the man of your dreams <laughs> in an elastic waist with your feet in a bucket of water. But, um, you but, must have been cute, so, <laughs> like, did he approach? How did no, this... he didn't approach. Our eyes met in the mirror a few times, and I was embarrassed that I kept getting caught looking over at him. And then he left first, and then when I was paying my bill, I asked the receptionist who he was, and she said, hmm, that's funny you're asking me who he is, because he just asked me who you were. I said, no, I did he know. And a few days later, he, he, she called for permission for my number, mm. and he called me. And, um, you know, and the rest 
as history. they say, is history. Well, I've never been here before, so coming into Jefferson Barracks at all and just like seeing this much death, that's a little, that's a little overwhelming, you know? I mean, it's, there's so much emotion. Every stone is just so much emotion, so many days. And, you know, a lot of people, a lot of impact and other people, no impact at all. And that's just, it's weird. It, it's overwhelming. It is. I remember the first time when I came in here, I was like, just lost it. Cause one, seeing my name on that stone, and then just knowing how much I love my dad. We get this report that says, man, is you know, dad's not feeling great. We go to the doctor, get him checked out, accelerates really, really fast. He has melanoma skin cancer and it spreads up into his brain. So now he has these brain tumors and then a new brain surgery on him. And at 56 years old, this thing just spirals out of control super quick to where now he's, this guy who I saw is this strong, obviously, Vietnam vet, hero, Highway Patrol Academy graduate. Crypto clearance. Crypto clearance in the armed forces, like, and my hero, you know, yeah. church builder. He shot himself. Shot in the leg. And took cry. himself, drove himself to the hospital. Yeah, <laughs> it's just this guy. Now he cannot do anything about what's happening. Mm -hmm. And I think that's where a lot of us are, is we get to thinking we can do it. That's why the Bible said, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. He didn't say be strong for the Lord. The way I feel today is way different than the first time I came out here, so as, as you know. It took me eight years to do it. I mean, I did what needed to be done for the church, which was like, okay, he dies on Saturday, I preach for him on Sunday, mm -hmm. which was unbelievable, because I'm crushed emotionally, mm -hmm. as you know. I mean, I would lose it every hour, because when somebody dies that you love so much, you think, my life is never gonna be normal again. Like, I'm gonna think about them every hour, mm -hmm. every minute of every day. And it was unexpected, your dad was 56 yeah. and was only sick for 30 days. Yep, boom, he goes to heaven, but still, I mean, I know he's in heaven, he's in a better place, but I don't get to see him again. And I'm like, God, why was he even born? He's 56 years old and all this stuff's going through my head. So I was still hurting so bad that on the holidays, I was like, man, I don't wanna be home for Christmas. You know, people would be saying, I'll be home for Christmas. And every Bing Crosby song reminded me of him. Every Ann Murray song reminded him. You know, Amy Grant's, you know, Tender Tennessee Christmas reminded me of him. <laughs> it gets to this point to where unexpectedly he's dying of cancer. And I, I must say too, that I preached a sermon here on that eighth year that I came back called, there's cancer on the, on the brain, which is what my dad had. And then there's cancer on the mind. Which is what you had. What I had. And the cancer on the mind can't be seen, you think, by an x-ray, but it can be seen by your family. So yes. while I'm crying about, you know, eight years into it, I still don't like the holidays because I'm like telling my kids, but I don't have my dad. And they never said it, but I bet they probably thought, well, we don't have our dad either mm -hmm. because I was in a funk during those holiday seasons. And so now God obviously wants us to get up, right? He says in Isaiah 60, you know, arise, arise, maybe talking to you right now, from your prostration, from the depression where circumstances have kept you, rise to a new life, be radiant with the glory of the Lord. So I had to just make a decision. I'm gonna shake this, mm -hmm. I'm gonna be done with this, because I was like, I don't wanna go to the lake anymore, because when I go to the lake, every time I see, it was like, me and dad ate there. And I realized not everybody has this relationship with my dad, but you know, yeah. this was crazy. You guys were tight, you guys were tighter than twins. But yeah. you said something, you said, I had to make a decision. Yeah. Talk, what, talk to me about that. I had to decide, which is something nobody else could do for me, and mm -hmm. it's something nobody else can do for you. And you can watch the Nicole Crank show and be like, I'm inspired by her and I love her, but I can tell you this girl gets up every day and makes a lot of decisions. And so I just had to decide to go, I'm, I'm shaking this, I'm gonna get over this, I'm gonna pull my big boy boots up, my big boy pants up, and I'm moving on, and I'm gonna act like I'm right and act like I'm healed, even though I don't feel healed because it's wrong to do this to everybody around me. And it's really wrong to do it to me because I'm prone to be a little bit melancholy in some of the songs or thoughts or dad, and that's okay, but you have, it's okay to grieve, you have to. Yeah. You gotta cry, but mm -hmm. eight years is too long. It's time for a new beginning. So I came out here and went on to a new life and really experienced freedom that I think brought freedom to me and my family and to you and everybody because I had to enjoy life again. I had to go, I'm gonna make some new memories.
If I ask you about the last 12 months of your life, what would you say? I survived, I made it, I got through. You know, I think that's what the enemy meant to do with our year. I think he meant to crash it, just like make us survive. But that is not what God called us to do at all. It's what I did with the first part of my life. Rape, molestation, abuse, marrying the wrong guy, trying to find the right guy, my wedding went whack, lived on the bully bus, played the shame game. I really think for a long time I tried to survive in life. And God said, no more. You're not called to survive, you are called to thrive. So you know what I did? I wrote a book. And now I'm here to tell you I'm feeling pretty vulnerable because this book is my story about all of my pain and heartache. But the seed that God planted in that space and how he brought me through. Wanna know what the book's called? It's called I Will Survive. Big rip on the page, no, I will thrive. God has called you to thrive in life. And I'm so excited to share this with you because I believe God is gonna use this as something to take you out of where you've been into where you're called to be. I just finished the first chapter of I Will Thrive and can I tell you, I could not put it down. It was so good, it was captivating, inspiring. I wrote down quotes, you've got to read it. Together, we're gonna to get this message into a lot of people's hands. All you gotta do, get on the website right now. Today I'm going on a walk with my friend Roma Downey. So we just got together to hang out just a little bit because she has been doing some really cool stuff. Yeah. We've known each other for like a decade now. Yeah, a long time. And long. it's so nice to see you and you look so beautiful. Oh my gosh. So you look like an angel. Ah! <laughs> Which touched by an angel, not every viewer might know you yeah. are. Yes, I was I was an actress on Touched by an Angel for many, many years, and it was just such a great time in my life to yeah. be able to be the messenger. Mm -hmm. And when you were on Touched by an Angel, you got to work with? With Della Reese. And she became? Yeah, she became everything to me. Mm -hmm. She became my mama. Yeah. My mama. My mother had died when I was a little girl, and and she came into my life and you know became the mother i had been looking for so so you were actually so you're not from america no i'm originally from ireland canadian uh, irish yeah oh, i didn't I, know you were canadian can irish huh? <laughs> and the ireland that you left was not the ireland of today no it was a very troubled time i grew up in the north of ireland i grew up during a, a time that is known in our history as the troubles yeah. thank god we have peace there now mm -hmm. um, but it was not your normal childhood um, because there were there was an army there was explosions mm -hmm. shootings that kind of thing you know and how old were you when you came to the u.s i was in my 20s you're in your 20s I had to find the courage to move across the sea. I mean, I was chasing a dream, and um, and I can't imagine like living in another, like living in America, and at twenty something, just picking up on my own and heading to a foreign country by yourself. Yeah, by myself. By yourself. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it was bold. It was bold. But you know, I follow you on Instagram, and you're a lady that knows all about bold. Oh. You know, you step out courageously, and sometimes you just have to do that. Like if you waited till you had everything ready, you, you know, you would never get anything done, would you really? That's one of the things I love by, about you is that even though you've walked through some dark places in life, and you, you just came through a really hard year, you haven't focused on the darkness, yeah. but you focused on the light. Well, if you had spoken to me about six months ago, I was certainly in some cloudy days. I had a lot of grief in my heart. I had lost my, my mother, my co-star, Della Reese. Mm -hmm. um, I had lost my br beloved brother, Lawrence, mm -hmm. who passed away. Um, uh, uh, of a very fast cancer that took him uh, back in Ireland. And then you, you may remember that we had the, our community, the fear yes. came into our community through those terrible fires in Malibu out near where I live. So it was a time- You had an evacuation. We evacuated and we didn't know if we would come back to right. our home still standing. And thank, thank the Lord we did. Mm -hmm. uh, we had some smoke damage, but it just was a time, it was a very challenging time. And I remember being at your house meeting your dogs. 
Yes. Your, your dogs that are as big as you are. I mean, seriously, <laughs> these dogs are as big as she is. Huh. And, and I one, did. Of, one of your dogs went. I did. He, and he went down due to a uh, respiratory illness that he uh, developed right after the fires because mm. of smoke damage to his lungs. I had some challenging days, certainly. But yes, always drawn back to finding the hope, yeah. to being encouraged, find, you know, in the different ways that you find that. So yeah. those are like, you know, how it's different for everybody, I guess. Is that maybe what inspired you to bring light to other people? Yes, how for did they sure. Coincide? No, absolutely. I think when, you know, I think when you've experienced mm -hmm. loss of any kind, mm -hmm. it, 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 it can do, it, in my experience as it goes, it can go a couple of different ways for people. Either they shut down mm -hmm. or they open up, Right. you know? And the shutdown sometimes comes from fear mm -hmm. that it hurts so much that there's a mistrust or I don't want to love that much because it's too painful when you lose somebody. Or, or your heart just expands with compassion. Mm -hmm. So actually, a week or two ago, I was sleeping and I woke up and there was this charger like on my laptop in the corner of the room, it had a little light on it. And I was kind of frustrated by it. I'm like, oh, it's bugging me, I can't sleep, I can't sleep. And I finally put a pillow right in the way so I couldn't see the light anymore. Yes. I was like, oh, that's better, I can sleep now. Yeah. And the Lord spoke to my heart and he said, yeah, you can sleep in the dark. I said, mm. yeah. yeah. And um, then he said, you know, sleep is a form of prayerlessness. Mm. And I'm like, yes. And he's like, you can't pray while you're sleeping. I'm like, yes. And he said, so many people are so exhausted and they're trying to sleep their way into rest. Mm. And he said, sleep happens in the darkness, but rest happens in the light. Wow, that's so good. And then he paused and he said, of my presence. Oh, that's so good. So then Psalm 23 says, he restores our soul. Yes. So the restoration of our soul doesn't, the restoration of our body happens when we sleep, but the restoration of our soul happens in the light. Yes. So we need light workers. <laughs> yes. Well, and we all, I mean, to be human is to experience suffering, isn't it? I yeah. mean, nobody escapes that. Doesn't matter what your life is. Doesn't matter if you're living some extraordinary life that everybody imagines must be the perfect life in Hollywood or wherever you might be. But loss will knock on your door, you know, it will. and. And I think, you know, you have no choice but to open your door mm -hmm. and let it in. Mm -hmm. and, and, but he equips you. That when good things happen, I, mm -hmm. I would love to be able to include yes. them or sh pick up the phone and share yeah. that news with them or, you know, the million things that we do. But we, through our faith, we have the promise. Today, I want to encourage you about this. So here Rama was, she was super brave. Um, she had no parental fallback plan. Right? She came to the U.S. with, if it doesn't work out, I'll just go home. Where is home? Mom and dad are gone. So she really had to walk by faith out of necessity in an early portion of her life. And instead of letting it make her bitter, it made her better. And that's my prayer for you today. We, we're sharing this Lightworkers information with you. We're, we're, we're collaborating to, to point you in a direction where you can get more love in a quick format. Love. God is love. So when I say you can get more of love, you can get more of God in your life through light workers and some of the pieces that we've shared with you today. I once heard the story of a little boy who saw a cocoon and was so impatient to help the butterfly emerge that he gently cut the cocoon open to let the butterfly out. What he didn't know was that it's the very process of struggling from the cocoon that makes the butterfly strong. Without the actual struggle, the little wings can't gain the strength that they need to fly. Sometimes we have to go through pain to gain strength. When my mom passed away, I experienced such an intense sense of loss and heartache. She had been the center of our home, full of love and life. Her laughter was welcoming, like a warm fire on a cold night. And in an instant, she was gone. It was like all the lights had been turned out in the room and all the color had been removed from the picture. It was the most painful experience of my life. And yet within it, there was a blessing because the loss was what deepened my faith. And as I turned to God for strength and comfort in my brokenness, it was the love of God that helped me heal. 
God can use even our pain to make a difference. Nothing is ever wasted. So if you are ever going through a tough time in your life, don't lose hope or be discouraged. Remember the butterfly in the cocoon. It's the struggle that strengthens our wings so we can fly. I just love that intro music to that show called Friends. I think it's because I always wanted friends like that. That's one of the reasons I started the Circle of Friends. It's a mentoring partnership coaching group. You know, we don't get to be on TV for free. Now, like other shows get paid to be on, we have to pay to be on. And the only reason we're on is because of your generosity and your partnership, and I thank you for that. So we've come up with this whole program. It's a partnership program. It's $27.77 a month. And every month I come to you with special teachings on Zoom, it's private, and you can talk live right back, ask questions and dig in. Every single month, I bring you my guests. I bring you Amy Grishel, Victoria Osteen, Dr. Dee Dee Freeman, Elisa Bevere, Cheryl Brady, all of these people. How can you become a partner with us in the Circle of Friends? Go to NicoleCrank.com forward slash circle. I promise you, you're gonna see immense value and you're really gonna grow. Join us today. What caused you to get strong faster than eight years? Before my dad was getting ready to pass, he was hanging on and the Lord said, hey, I want to show you heaven. And he gave me a vision of heaven. And there's my dad's house or mansion, huge columns. And it was done. And after all that, you know, there was a little more detail to it all. And then all of a sudden now there was a house next to his that was being built. And the Lord spoke to me. He said, that's your dad's mansion. Mm -hmm. And he said, there's yours. It's not done yet, which I was really glad. <laughs> <laughs> me too. <laughs> and uh, so then all of a sudden now I had this strong desire to go tell my dad right now. So I go to the hospital. So this revelation of heaven happens before your dad passes. Yeah, dad's alive and he won't be for long, like within five hours he's gone. Mm. I go to him and I say, hey dad, I just saw heaven. And he's, you know, I wanna let people know too, like he's out of consciousness, but he comes back for a second, for just intermittently here and there. And people that are in hospitals mm -hmm. don't ever think they don't hear everything you say. Yeah. They hear the spirit man is perceiving that. So they're like, you, they can't understand what you're saying. Oh, this yeah. they can. But in my dad's case, he gets ready to leave. I go in and tell him, say, hey, I just saw heaven. Explain to him everything I explained to you guys, except way more detail, longer. And then all of a sudden he opens his eyes and I said, do you want me to sing to you? And so I just started singing songs because I knew his body, his outward man had perished, but his spirit man was there and you were there right by me. And we left and of course it doesn't, I mean, that helps because I'm sure people are being helped by this right now. God brings you these verses, like he said, to be absent from the bodies, be present with the Lord. He says, therefore, go and comfort one another with these words. Mm -hmm. It's real. Heaven is real. But I'm still hurting because, I mean, I got a revelation of heaven. There goes my dad. Mm -hmm. So you agreed. We went to his house that night, slept in his bed. And I still remember being there, laying in those sheets where you could still smell him, mm -hmm. see all his little paraphernalia next to the bed, his Bibles and his prayer log. And, mm -hmm. and that's confusing too, because I'm like, man, he gave his life to God. And look at what's going on. And there's so much that you can't always make sense of. And I remember a, a great man of God came to me a few days afterwards and he says, and this is important. He said, don't try to figure this out. Yeah. Just the secret things belong to the Lord. And that brought me peace because I thought, I don't have to figure it out or go on a witch hunt. Just trust God that he's good. Trust God that daddy's in heaven. And that revelation just brought me a ton of comfort, a ton, ton of joy. People tell me, man, my dad wasn't right with the Lord or my son died. You don't know what they did at the last second. Mm -hmm. I know God's just. Man, is he loving. Mm -hmm. You know, oh, is he a forgiver? And oh, is he so good? that I think a lot of people might be surprised. Do not judge it or worry, because when you worry, mm -hmm. you probably will take days off of your life that yeah. you could have done some good things for Jesus and wind up well, there in heaven the anyway. The Bible for that is laborers in the field. Yeah. The guy who labored all day long, got paid, is the guy who came at the last second. Mm -hmm. So, because other people get worried about, because I, I know you've got some friends that are maybe a little older or maybe you're sick and they've come to you and said, I haven't served God my whole life. Is it oh, too yeah. late for me? And the answer the is all it takes is that, 
it, the decision is the decision no matter when it's made. Yep. <laughs> That's all it is. And we don't know in the last moments what decision was made. You know, here's the thing. We don't always understand what God's doing, how he's doing it, when he's doing it, who he chooses, why he chooses them. And the fact that he doesn't consult with us, I don't know if that frustrates you, but I mean, I wouldn't do everything the way God does it. But the thing is in Isaiah 55, it says his ways are not our ways and his thoughts are not our thoughts. And I just had to go through this with somebody the other day and I had to tell him something I wanna share with you. At some point, you just have to trust God. If His grace is sufficient, if His grace is overflowing, the fact that He took somebody home, or that a job changed, or that we lost a friend happened right now, we have to believe it's because His grace is so overflowing, He ran every other scenario and realized, I know you don't understand this right now, but I know how it turns out every other way, and right now was the right I just want to ask you, would you just lean in and say, God, I surrender. I trust you. I don't want to, but I am going to step out in faith and just trust that you did the most gracious thing in all of eternity. And here's the thing. I really believe that he did. I want to pray for you who's lost relationships, lost a job, lost a family member. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I just ask you to surround the heart, God, your love never fails. Touch them and let them know how greatly you love them and how greatly you believe in them, even in this moment. I pray their best is yet to come. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. I'm telling you what, friends, I wanna hear from you. Sometimes getting to tell your story is just this matter of healing that helps so much more than anything else. And I want you to share it with me on Facebook. I want you to show, share it with me on Instagram. Or if it's private, that's okay. Go to NicoleCrank.com, click on Let's Talk, and go ahead and just download me on what's happening in your life. I am gonna pray with you, and I am gonna share it with my prayer partners who are gonna pray for you. And in prayer with God, you are coming through this. The the rest of your life is the best of your life. God has more for you. I'll see you next time. The plans God has for people out in the future, he's in the resurrection business. In fact, all these people are gonna resurrect eventually. Mm -hmm. There's no grave gonna hold anybody down and God's gonna take us all up and that's what he wants to do today is resurrect our dreams, take us all up to a new life. Don't you love it's like, and then the UPS man that arrives <laughs> in the middle of it. He's delivering probably Amazon yeah, to somebody. Right, in the because I order everything off of Amazon. Oh my gosh, it's so easy, <laughs> isn't it? So we can be happy again. And it's okay not to think about them or the situation every day. So it was really good stuff. <laughs> that was great. I'm going to pretend to be Roma Downey right now. And she's just got this calming, oh. wanderlust oh, feeling about her. It's so wonderful.